five, four, three. in 1965, um, I was 20 years old, and uh, on the first morning in my first class, about 15 minutes in, a five-year-old kid came up to me and said, why does the ball bounce? And I thought, oh shit, I don't even know that. You know, I'm 15 minutes of teaching, and I think a teacher is supposed to be somebody who knows stuff, you know, and tells kids stuff. The rest of the morning went downhill like that. You know, why is your skin pink and my skin is brown? Why is the sky blue? Why does the floor feel sticky after we spill apple juice? That one I kind of liked because I knew the answer. And then later going to the park, why is that man sleeping in the street? Why, why, why? And I didn't know anything. And it created for me a real crisis. How does one teach when, you know, the stupidity is everywhere and the kind of lack of knowledge is everywhere? Um, I was rescued by a much older woman after I went into a crisis about what teaching was who came to our little school from two years of teaching in Guatemala where she taught Mayan kids. And she was 24. And her idea about teaching was much different. She said, you know, you've got to get over this idea that the teacher is the master and commander standing at the helm, gripping it tightly, trying to hold on for dear life, and, and develop a kind of another image. And the idea she had was that teaching was more like um, being a pilgrim or an explorer, somebody who went along with the students, uh, not somebody who boarded it over the students. And that uh, really changed everything for me as a teacher. I began to relate more to clay and paint and easels and tools and drafting supplies, and my classroom changed completely. I really adored Diana the minute I met her. Um, it took a while, a lot of luck and a lot of time and a lot of courage, really, for us to find each other, and the courage was supplied mostly by her. Um, but it, it, it was really that whole pathway toward each other was punctuated by two realities. One was our utopian little school, where we baked bread and tended gardens and uh, you know spent most of our days. And the other reality was kind of outside our window, a world in flames and the sights and sounds of war piercing through that window and plunging into our personal space. And it became kind of, a, uh, that contradiction became something that really defined our lives.